Alhamdulillahi allazhi arsala alayna rasulahu liyubayyina bilhuda allazhi nakhtalifu fihi wa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. In this noble month, we all have that burning desire in our hearts to strengthen our relationship not only with our Creator but with each other as well. This yearning comes from a place of love, passion and a longing for true connection, especially with those close to us. But sometimes, conflict gets in the way and we break free from even the relationship that binds us together. Therefore, O Muslims, do not get involved in arguments and debates over sensitive issues. The last thing you want to do is spend Ramadan quarreling and wrangling over issues that are not resolved in the whole other 11 months. Do not turn moon sighting into moon fighting and ranting over numbers of raka'at for taraweeh. What is important regarding all acts of worship is, everything must be based upon irrefutable evidence. Therefore, do not criticize people and castigate their deeds when they have as much evidence as you do. This is surely not the time to further weaken our rank by stirring up discord among ourselves and letting go of the reins of our spiritual growth. I'm sure this is not what any conscious Muslims would want. We understand that pure knowledge is a rare and precious commodity now. The vast majority of Muslims today don't even recognize true scholarship and as such have no interest in researching pertinent issues for themselves to make sure that they are clear on what they practice. They rely totally on their sheikhs, maulanas or imams, blindly following them to the dot. And this affliction has gripped all the various groups and brands of Muslims that exist everywhere on the planet. Those who label themselves as Hanafis, Salafis, Sufis, Sunnis, and the list goes on. We should avoid discussion with these types of individuals who are known for their dogmatic approach, who seem to have strong built-in misconceptions on various issues which they are not willing to change. Unfortunately, this elitist mentality is mostly found in people who are shackled in sectarian prejudice and terribly lack interest in juristic matters of any of the schools of jurisprudence other than the ones they are aggressively attached to. Being surrounded by this kind of extremism and religious backwardness is indeed hurtful, knowing that the truth can only be won and Islam has ordained upon us to conduct ourselves a certain way and to function within certain ambits. However, the same frustration and anger you feel towards this problem can be channeled into your own positive growth and self-improvement if you continue to be progressive in taking charge of your own spiritual journey. Think about the empowerment that comes with knowing that guidance comes through openness. So do not try to beat any point to death with anyone who is not prepared to listen since this may only lead you to some conflicting personal opinions with no real importance, especially if you yourselves have no real knowledge of the issue you are dealing with. Not only you should avoid the ignorant, but you yourselves should only speak about matters within your knowledge and expertise. Do not flirt with scholarly issues that are beyond your scope of understanding and mislead yourselves and others with more self-created problems. Reading a couple of books and having the ability to pull out a few quotes does not make one eligible to argue. Yet far too often, we find religious amateurs or self-styled scholars pungently get themselves involved in debates over subjects where they don't just create a forum to demonstrate a whole range of destructive emotions throughout, but they would cause a huge ruckus when things don't get their way. During the discourse, words are randomly picked without a thought for the consequences as each contestant is adamant on coming out triumphant or having the last say. In such setting, things usually get so bad that temper rises to boiling point and steam flows over, spilling out into every direction. Words that aim for the worst while nothing is missed from brutal character assassination to severed relationship. Ask yourselves, what could be more potentially dangerous than this? Hurling the revelation against each other like weapons of mass destruction to make the world a much more awful place. If you look carefully to get to the root of it all, you will find the reason a discussion gets heated and things spiral out of control are mainly because of these factors. Nowadays, there are lots of scholars in Islam, each of whom believes he is equally qualified to express an opinion that must be acted upon, whether such opinion is founded upon the truth or not. 
by the same token, they feel equally offended if they are opposing their opinion. Undoubtedly, all of this implies that these people's incomplete knowledge is somewhat noxious and flagrantly idiotic since they all have the recklessness and stupidity to make something inescapable when there is no textual evidence to even substantiate such claim or to classify something forbidden when there is variation differences of scholarly positions on the same issue and each one is backed by legitimate evidence. There is nothing more shamelessly ignorant than a person pretending to know what he doesn't know and thus wrangle under false pretense. Note, O Muslims, even if you are equipped with knowledge, it does not always have to be a win for you in the battle against ignorance, especially if pursuing the fight would bring about more negative than positive. So just let go before that even starts to emerge. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا دَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدًا كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا أُوتُ الْجَدَلِ No people go astray after being upon guidance except that they are plagued with argumentation. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَنَا زَعِيمٌ بَيْتٍ فِي رَدِّ الْجَنَّةِ وَبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ وَبَيْتٍ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقًّا I guarantee a house in the surroundings of paradise, a house in the middle of paradise, a house in the highest part of Jannah for the one who stopped being aimlessly argumentative, even if he is right. There is no doubt that Ramadan is about more than just giving up food and drink. It focuses on spiritual discipline. Fasting cleanses one from insincere intention, hypocrisy and all other negative traits that cause a person to be disconnected from Allah. This is the ultimate reason for the obligation. So be watchful of your conversations. Simply ensure you are not backbiting, slandering, or speaking in vain. Observe the Prophet's warning. Rubba saw imin laysa lahu min siyamihi illa al-ju'a. Wa rubba ko imin laysa lahu min qiyamihi illa sahar. Many people who fast get nothing from their fast except hunger and thirst, and many people who pray at night get nothing from it except sleeplessness. We all know that the Prophet ﷺ didn't speak casually. Whenever he spoke, whether in religious or worldly terms, it was to communicate an important message. Therefore, do not lose your cool. It is quite natural that after so many hours of fasting and with limited energy in the system, you may experience various negative emotional symptoms such as agitation, anger, and impatience, especially during the first part of Ramadan while you are busy adjusting. This is commonly normal in all of us. But remember, each and every passing moment of the month is an opportunity for us to get sanctified. Discipline is demanded continuously at any time, but such endeavor is in greater demand when we serve our Lord. Fasting motivates us to be more observant of our actions, to be patient and exercise greater tolerance. The Prophet ﷺ said, Fasting is a shield from the hellfire, just like a shield of yours in a battle. In closing, we should be tactically careful to guard our tongue since it's a fundamental characteristic of Islam to protect people within every segment of society from harm and evil. And a true Muslim works most fervently towards establishing this right, as he knows every word that is spoken is accounted for. He knows the art of communication is not mastered by just knowing what to say, but how to say and when to say it. Being level-headed, being compassionate, being respectful does not make one weak. Yet more than often, it's the harder path to take because this comes from the intensity of one's faith and the depth of oneself. The Quran reminds us, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Not a word is said except that there is a watcher by him ready to record it. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ